Intermittent fasting. It's been really popular over the last couple of years. We're gonna talk about what it is, um, what some of the research say, what are the pros and cons, and what are my thoughts about it. Stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Neely with Neely on Nutrition, registered dietitian nutritionist and a certified health coach. Um, let me preface this video by saying that this is for um, geared towards the women that I work, like to work with, my clients. And um, so you're over 40, pair your postmenopausal, but you kind of been there, done that, and now ready to get off that diet roller coaster. That's who this video is for. Okay? So if that's you, thanks for being here. I get asked lots of questions. And um, for example, recently, Becca reached out to me. She's really confused about what to do. She said, I don't know what to believe anymore. Should I eat this or not eat this? So what it led her to was when we dove into her nutrition, she said, you know, I was interested in this intermittent fasting and I just want to get your thoughts about it. So we, we talked a little bit about it. And so what she's doing is she's eating from like only um, 11 in the morning till 5 p.m. So it has this window of time. And I said, well, how's that working for you? And she said, oh, it's not. She said, you know, I really miss having my morning breakfast. And sometimes I get really hungry before um, 11 o'clock. And so I just dove a little bit deeper and I said, so just make sure I understand. So you, you used to eat breakfast, but you're not eating breakfast now and I'm waiting until 11 o'clock. And she said, yes. I said, okay. So <laughs> let's talk about intermittent fasting. What is intermittent fasting? Well, first of all, let me just say that fasting is nothing new. We've been fasting forever, like for cultural reasons or religious reasons. But this intermittent fasting, it's kind of like repackaged and rebranded and tied up into a bow and made to look all sexy and shiny and new. And yeah, it's been uh, getting a lot of attention over the last number of years. Basically, it's really not a diet per se. It's not telling you what to eat. It's really focusing on when to eat. And there are essentially three um, major types of intermittent fasting. The first type is alternate day fasting, where you're um, eating unrestricted on one day and then the next day you eat zero calories and the next day you eat unrestricted again. That's one form. Another form, and one that's become quite popular, is um, this 5-2 approach, which is like modified alternate day fasting. So five days of unrestricted eating and then two days of restricted eating. And the restricted eating is not, and it's alternating those days, it's um, uh, limiting the calories. So about four to 500 calories, for example, for um, a typical female on those restricted days. The third type is what is called um, time-restricted feeding or time-restricted eating. So you're eating every day, but you're eating only in this window of time. And the time might be um, maybe a six-hour window like Becca was doing or um, an, an eight-hour window. There's lots of different varieties to them, but basically it's eating in this window and not eating um, the other time. There are many different variables to that particular um, um, intermittent fasting. What does the research say about intermittent fasting? Well, first of all, it's kind of like all over the board. There is research that's done um, looking at like the cardiometabolic profile or the health parameters, that which is done on looking at the gut microbiome, um, some on longevity, and yeah, it's kind of all over the place. Um, but specifically, I wanted to look at the intermittent fasting, the research that's done on um, for weight loss. And this is where it gets kind of hard to really um, compare, but I'm just looking at a number of, of various studies because there are so many different variables. There's alternate day fasting, there's the modified day fasting, there's time restricted um, feeding. There's so many different parameters you really can't compare apples to apples. But let me just say that um, most of the studies did show that people could lose weight which really isn't surprising since you're cutting back on this window of time that you can be eating. Um, but like many studies for weight loss, we can lose weight, but how is that weight loss maintained? That's the big question. And I didn't see any studies related to how long somebody can keep that, um, that weight off. Furthermore, the length of the studies varied considerably. Um, the longest study I saw was for 52 weeks. Most of the studies though, were um, like 12 weeks or 20 weeks, 26 weeks, not much beyond that. And sure, we can lose weight in a period of time, but again, the real key is how long is that weight kept off? 
What I found especially interesting was that there was a quite a large um, percentage, um, which is not uncommon really with weight loss studies, but uh, what the dropout rate was, is how many people did, you know, start the, the, the diet, but did not finish it. And it ranged from like 20% up to like 66%. So in other words, it could be a real challenge for having somebody stay on the particular protocol. Um, some studies show that there was a loss of lean body mass, your muscle tissue, um, but other studies show that there wasn't a loss of that. So again, there's quite a bit of variability. Let's talk about the pros and the cons to intermittent fasting. One of the pros to intermittent fasting is that Intermittent fasting has more to do with the time that you're eating, not necessarily what you're eating. So it doesn't classify foods as good and bad. And that's not a bad thing, I like that. Another pro is that it may facilitate weight loss. Um, and some, um, a lot of the research shows that it can facilitate weight loss. But there's a big question mark as far as how long is that weight kept off? And that's the thing. Um, intermittent fasting is about restriction, not restricting what you eat, but when you eat. and going into the cons, it's like one of the cons is it just keeps somebody in that diet mentality mode, which is just from what I've seen in my experience and all the women that I've worked with over the years, it is just not ideal for overall health and well-being. Another one of the cons is that you're not paying attention to hunger. So you're eating within this window, like Becca was eating between like 11 and five. It's kind of like telling somebody, um, oh, you can only pee from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. <laughs> it's not listening to your physiological um, you know, aspect of what your body needs. And that's the same thing with hunger. Um, and for um, the, the my approach is really paying attention to the hunger and satiety. So intermittent fasting doesn't really um, pay attention to that. Um, another aspect of it, another um, another one of the cons is that you don't have the freedom with food. Now you might have freedom with your choices, but really when it comes down to it, if you don't have freedom with when you're eating, that to me is not freedom with food. And the bottom line, it's just about restriction. And that is just not, it's just, it's another diet. It's packaged up in a, in a little bow and um, not telling you, again, not telling you what to eat necessarily, but when to eat. So if you haven't figured it out, I'm not a huge fan of intermittent fasting for the reasons, primarily for the reasons I just mentioned, not paying attention to hunger, um, you don't have the freedom, and um, you are um, restricting, and um, it just kind of keeps you in that diet mentality mode. And we wanna get out of that diet mentality mode. If this information resonates with you, please do me a favor and give me a little, boop, a little thumbs up. Let the algorithm know that you liked it. Um, and and yeah, and if you need a little bit of help, I offer a complimentary um, session over the phone and um, link is in the description, but we can talk about what your particular needs are. So yeah, that's what I've got for you today about intermittent fasting. Let me know if you've got any questions. You can leave those in the comments. Thanks for watching Elian Nutrition and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. And what does the research say? And this is where it gets really interesting. It's really kind of all over the place. First of all, there's a... Thanks, George.